just came in here. Kyle got wrecked by all of the hounds, and um, you guys had to retreat back into the wilderness to take a long rest. Came back, hallway was cleared, but you noticed some, uh, of the form of Serunos, the of the wild hunt, uh, a figure from Tale and Legend back in the Feywild, uh, standing before you here. Rather than confront him, you took a dimension door down here into the other end of the hallway and started mm. pulling mobs here. Did you have a question, Galadan? No, but I'm allowed to be here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just, I moved you over there. Thanks. Did you want to, if you want, you can start back here. No, I was kind of hoping I'd be here. Okay. Um, at the end of the last session, the one of the mages broke off down this secret hallway to try and get ahead here to warn the others, and uh, Savik, you chased him down and put an end to that. So with that, we open. What do you guys want to do? All right, uh, let's see. Uh, is this chest, is this chest down here good to go? I'm sorry, did you ask that with a chest? Yeah. Yes. All right, well, what I'll do is I'll move up here and loot the body of the mage, and then I'll go around and check out the chest. All right, one second, please. <clears throat> or would it be better to just wait to loot everything until after we clear the dungeon? That's up to you. I mean, that would save time tonight. Yeah, that way we can at least play and not have to worry about, uh, you know, having to divvy out loot and then... Sure. I'm yeah. going to put, I'll put a note on the map here. Okay. I guess what we can do is clear the rest of the dungeon and then we can always come back. put a reminder up there. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. Yeah, I can see it. All right, cool. Uh, okay, so you're in this uh, hidden passageway here. Um, <clears throat> there is a chest down here near the corner. Uh, otherwise, the passageway continues up and around. Hey, Wes, are we going forward or are we just kind of plowing ahead here? Yeah, basically. Uh, I want to go around the secret. The oh, secret. dude. Yeah, let's. That's what I want to do, too. Okay. Right. Can you guys go back, though, to about here? <laughs> okay. I mean, you you can certainly do that, but I just need you to go back real quick. So you guys are going down the secret hallway. Don't worry, Gallon Dan. I'll move you back here, buddy. Yeah, dude. And I want to hit up the perception check and the stealth check. Are okay. Are talking here? Um, there is a light. There's one torch right here. Casting uh, dim light and what is that? They just added the new measure tool. Okay. Casting dim light. In a five foot radius. In a five foot radius. Five foot radius. <laughs> He's not even five feet. All right, make a go ahead and roll if you want to roll a perception check or anything. Yeah, let's do perception. 
go ahead with that, which is a nice little, can you guess what my perception check is? I'll can do I Oh, 18. And if I got to be sneaky about it. All right, so you got an 18 and a 26 for stealth. Yeah. Okay, so you're coming around the corridor here, and above you, you can hear uh, a kind of like a, <laughs> I don't know, um, something kind of flopping or slithering around on the ceiling. Uh, or um, maybe dragging itself across the ceiling is a better better way to describe it. Dragging, okay. And it's coming from around the corner or up the hall? Uh, up the hall. I'll slink around there. Hopefully my uh, perception will be enough to see if I can see it. Okay, you move up the hall and uh, it sounds like it's directly above you. I, uh, I'm going to look up. All right, you look up and here's what you see. A oh, black, black ooze. Two what of them. That? Black pudding. So it's a it's a like a black ooze. No. No. Yeah, let's change them to something else. Let's change them to uh, spiders. Okay. Uh, tell you what, roll a d100, and if you roll a 100, I will change them to whatever you want them to be. Oh, do it. really? Yep, do it. Okay. Oops. Oh no! Yeah, they're black puddings. <laughs> Fuck! I almost had it. <laughs> I mean, maybe from a certain point of view. You're just doing this because you didn't win the ten thousand dollars at the airport in Las Vegas. <laughs> I can assure you that is not why. Anyway, what are you doing? Because they're looking kind of like they're going to drop down from the ceiling. I may have made a attack. Okay. I'm going to make some Bill Cosby faces. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably jump back, honestly. All right, well, make a dexterity save as the ooze above you begins to fall to the ground. See if you can jump back. Okay, dex. Dex, please. Well, you can be athletics or acrobat. It's whatever you want, but... Well, technically... Acrobatics is uh, when you try to do something, and a save would be when you're trying to prevent something from happening to you. But don't you think, wouldn't uh, acrobatics also be like jumping and... Yeah. Right? Like jumping out of the way? Well, yeah, well, no, jumping out of the way might be a deck. Okay. Save. Yeah, well, we'll just we'll just call it a deck save. Okay, so if I'm trying to jump out of the way, yeah, I do a deck save. He's falling to the ground. I don't know if he's they are falling to the ground. Yeah, the skill check. 
skill track versus a thieving bow. Thieving bow is trying to prevent. If they fall to the ground and hit me, I'll get armed, right? So. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to roll a deck thieving bow. 18. All right, with an 18, yep. you can nimbly duck out of the way as this thing crashes to the ground in front of you, kind of with a splat. Anyway, roll for initiative, guys. You mean it sounds like my cat when he falls on the floor? Yeah, plop. would you call that the plop? Yep. <laughs> plop. That's so funny. Mr. Plop. Yeah, he runs and plops in front of you. Honestly, I can't run in my house, but you gotta be careful. I step the pill plop behind you and you're cooking. It's like Luna always wants to stand in front of my feet when I need to get into the oven. And I'm like, Luna, you are so little. You need to <laughs> you need to go lay down. All right, it'll be Gallon Dan and then the, the black puddings and then Savik. Gallon Dan, you're up first, buddy. Cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna bonus action. Uh, Hunter's Mark. Yeah, I'm on bonus action Hunter's Mark. Is this thing five feet in front of me? Yes. So, I have disadvantage if it's too close, right? Yes. Okay, let's not fight that one. Let's use the... Bonus action to disengage. Much I don't want to do that. Okay. Now, nah, fuck it. I'm going to pop them up with my weapons. Time to go in melee, boys. This is close quarters. Bonus action to, yeah. So, yeah, still 100 mark, bonus action, 100 mark, and I'm going to attack this guy with a short sword. Is that a magical short sword? Yeah. Okay. Uh, does it know where I am? Does it see me? Uh, yeah. Okay, then. So then I get a, a, a 12, a 22, and a 20. Uh, all of those hit. Okay. Then in that case, I'm going to be doing a D6 plus. Four damage. But then I'm going to do 100 mark. And then, wait. If my ally, I don't think I get any sneak attack on this, do I? Your ally would have to be within five feet of the creature. Yeah. Or you'd have to have advantage. Yeah. So I do six, eight, and six. And then 36. Fourteen. That's 34 damage. Uh, okay, so you hit that. You hit the uh, the black pudding, and you take, oh, eight points of acid damage. Ah. From its corrosive body. Anything uh, else? No. no, but I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to move after this turn. So I'm done. Okay. Uh, let's see. After you, it'll be the pudding in front, and then the pudding in the back. Pudding pops. 
Pudding pops. Bobs. <laughs> All right. Uh, so. Sorry, just a second. Yep. All right. So the pseudopod is going to make an attack against you, Gallon Dan. Oof. Seven versus AC. <laughs> no, bud. That sucks. Uh, all right. So he misses on that. This guy in the back, it'll be his turn. And he's going to slip up onto the wall here. If I, I okay, so he's gonna slip up onto the wall and he's gonna move five, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. So he moves on down the hall here. And ends his turn because he has no range attack. Oh, you know what? No, that's stupid. He'll dash. So he's going to dash, and Savik, you look over your right shoulder, and you see this giant black pudding just chilling on the wall next to you. And they end their turn, and it's your turn, Savik. Uh, let's see here. Hmm. Try and fight the black pudding. I think I still have Blade Song active. Well, I don't have Blade Song still active. Uh, I guess I still have Spirit Shroud active. So, um, what are we going to do here? Oh, wait. I'm sorry. I would be able to do sneak attack damage. You would be able to? Yeah, because he didn't. Did he take a turn yet? Yes, he went after nah. you. Yeah, he went after me, but not before. No, so yeah, you can add that. Go ahead. Yeah, I would technically have advantage on other attacks too. Okay, well, um, if you want, you can re-roll them, and we can redo the damage. Uh, nothing matters unless I get crits. Okay, so, so then it's just uh, 2d6 extra sneak attack damage. Another so stick? Say, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that one. I was just looking at my character sheet. All right. Oh. You hit him with that sneak attack damage, and part of his body separates. Only smaller. More what flavor he is. Black. Savik, it's your turn, buddy. All right. Uh, let's see. Guess I'll go ahead and take the disengage action. I move back here. And I'll end my turn. Okay. <laughs> you sound so sad. <laughs> Sorry, man. I was using Channel Divinity Eeyore for a second. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, if that's the end of your turn, then Gallon Dan, it's a round down and it's your turn. Well, first thing I'm going to do is call the cops. <laughs> and the second thing I'm going to do is order the most expensive environmental soil test because this place is a fucking mess and I had it. <laughs> a mess of mechanics? 
No, that, this place is a fucking mess, and I've had it. Oh, okay. I was like, what did I do? They're going to have the most expensive environmental test, world test, contamination test, and then they're going to pay for it. The empire will pay. Yeah. We're going to build a great wall, and the empire will pay for it. This is ridiculous. Believe me. We're fucking mold going out of the walls, start moving around people, whatever it does. Uh, bonus action, disengage, draw a bow. And fuck. If I could disengage, move here, shoot, and then keep moving, I'm still good, right? Do you get two attacks? Yeah, get to attack. Like so one you, painted. Yeah, so use one action to disengage and then take your other attack action yeah. and then move. I think you can. Oh, no, no, no. I, I'm a rogue. I get a bonus action to disengage. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you're good. And then I'm going to move so I can take a shot without the demand. And then I'm going to keep moving so I don't get any, um, what do you call it, reaction attacks? So uh, let's do that. Yeah, opportunity attacks, yeah. Let's go. Let's talk about my character sheet. Let's go, boys. Uh, power attack him. Oh, shit. Man, I'm not going to have a band or anything. Hmm. Well, these guys aren't hard to hit. I'm just going to go go with it. So No, their AC is really low. They just suck. You're hitting the guy in front of you? This guy? Yeah, I'll hit that guy. Okay, 18 and 20 hit. Yeah, I don't have any... Um... Yeah, it's a power, power strike, power attack. Plus 16, boys, but uh, no sneak attack, unfortunately. But I do have a mark, so let's do 2d6 there. Or 2. 19 plus 19 is going to be 38. Damn. Uh, all right, so... Thirty-eight is going to put him down because he can That's only split. Yeah, he can only split if he has at least ten hit points left after taking an attack. So, well, we need to chunk him. Yeah, you pretty much you chunk him. I'm just moving him out of the way to clean up the space a little. Uh, okay, so you did your cunning action, disengage. You attacked. Are you doing anything else? I'll keep moving as far as I can. Oh. Five, two, five, six, seven. I can actually end up back where Savik is, but I just stop here. Okay. All right. Uh, are you doing anything else? No. Okay. Well, then it's the black pudding's turn. It's Pudding Pop's turn. Deep, deep, dop, dop, pudding pops. Here he, say, he says, as he comes, sli slides his body down the hall, his form. A black ooze is probably like a they, them. All right, so he comes slithering up the hall here, and he's going to hit you, Gallon Dan, well, his, maybe. His pronouns are going to be was and were pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> Fifteen. That's a miss, isn't it? Uh, yep. All right. I got my bow out, but I'm still a miss. That, that sucks. All right, so he misses, and then we're gonna have old boy here slither down the hall here. Whoops. Did you see they updated the menu bar in Roll Twenty, Dave? There's a lot of confusing shit going on in here. All right, so this guy is going to stay up on the wall. He has spider climb. 
And he's just gonna slither on down here. I don't even know what the menu bar is. On the side of the... With a dice filler? Yeah, like the dice roller. You don't have to log in as like a DM sometime. Oh, uh, I did. You were, oh, you were just yeah. in the other day, yeah. Yeah, and I was confused as fuck. Look at your phone on the game. All right, pudding boy, what do you got for me? Oh, he dashed, so he can't attack. But he's hanging on the wall here right beside you guys. And he ends his turn, so Savik, it's your turn. All right. I guess he's probably he's within five feet of me. Yes. I just moved him out there to make it less cluttered. All right. Well. He's I'm on the just, wall. I'm just going to fucking attack him then. I'm going to have my familiar take the help action. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cast. I'm going to go ahead and cast Firebolt. Mm, or. Yeah, there's probably something like that they don't like. Let's not cast Firebolt. Let's instead. You said he's in five feet? Yes. Like I'd be able to, to attack him with a melee weapon? Yes. All right. Then that's what we're going to do. We're going to attack him with a melee weapon. I'm going to go ahead and use a uh, booming blade then. Okay. Nice. Uh, 25. Hit. Uh, all right. Um, so that's 2d6 plus 5. For 12. And then uh, I still have concentration up on Spirit Shroud. Uh, so okay. he's, he's going to take an additional 2d8 damage. Uh, he's going to take a D8 of thunder damage and then a D8 of radiant damage. And okay, then, um what ki- what ki- uh what's the damage type for booming blade? Uh thunder. Okay. Cool. Cool cool. All right. So he's going to take t- 25. Damn. Takes an additional 13. All right. Um he maintains his um globulous form and does not split after your attacks. All right. Well, I'm going to follow that up then with the second attack. Okay. Oh, um, you're... Never mind. I answer my own question. 18. Um, let's see. 18 is a hit. All right. Blobicus. Blutter's Gate. Blutter's Gate. Uh... So he's going to take this from the arc blade, another 14, and then he's also going to take uh, an additional D8 of Spirit Shroud Radiant damage. Uh, He can't recover health, and his speed is reduced by 10 for two. Um, Whenever you hit with the arc blade, I can't remember, is it slashing damage or lightning damage? Uh, He takes... It's one D, so it would be one D six, or yeah, it would be like a D six of slashing damage and then a D six of lightning damage. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. That's what I thought. I just and then remember is he also just... in proximity to where the lightning could jump to this guy? <clears throat> yes, I guess he is. All right, so I'll go ahead and roll up another two D six for that. for seven on okay on this guy you notice that he takes the lightning damage but it doesn't seem to affect him quite as strongly okay um let's see and and now at the end of your turn he splits and it's going to be a smaller version of him but okay Okay. Uh, anything else, Savik? No, that's going to end my turn. 
Okay. Round down. Gallandan, you're up. Uh, maybe say another creature's face you consider difficult terrain and you cannot aim your turn. Ah, uh, okay, cool. So, sorry, what did you say, man? I didn't hear what you said. Shit. So, if I want to move through this guy's space, I have to contest it and we'll do athletic check. To move athletic through? Athletic contest. Yeah. What does if he I have to do? It's a contest. So he has to roll his athletics, and I would have to roll athletics. I only, I, um... That's strength, that's strength-based check, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm not interested. All right, well, if that's what you want to do... I don't know, I don't think I'm interested. Yeah, you do, that's exactly what you want to do. No, I don't think I do. I think I'm yeah. a short That's door. what you want to do. You want to walk right through him. I'll put the bow away. I'll put the bow away and uh would I be I'll be able to sneak attack this guy, right? I pull out the short and board again and you can attack action. either of these guys. Yeah, but he's at five feet with the five feet of an ally. I'll move my mark over to this guy, sword and board and attack with uh, Mark and sneak attack. Okay, you take Mark off the other guy. That's what I'll do. All right, do it, let's see. Ooh. All right, that'll be a D6 plus four, D6 plus four, and then we're gonna throw up a 40 what? 46? 46 for sneak attack, shouldn't it be? Yeah, and, and Mark. Oh, yeah. Nine? All right, well, you slaughter him. 28. Yeah, 28 is going to put him down since he split his health pool. Um, and like I said, they can only split as a reaction when they have 10 hit points after taking an attack. So. Okay. Wait, me, I'm the tank now. You're hey, you're not talking, you're not telling the wizard tank anything he doesn't know. <laughs> dude, dude, I'm telling you what. I'm protecting you, buddy. <laughs> I dude, got was, leather armor on. It was, did you hear Kyle bitching about the dogs downing him last week? <laughs> dude, they were yeah. a half, they were half CR dogs, but they were just hounds. <laughs> Do, them up. Do better. <laughs> Like, you're like, no, no, I'm rolling my death saving throw. I remember that. Yeah, he didn't even tell me he was down, and there was so much clutter in the hallway, I couldn't even see his health bar. Okay. Um, okay, so anything else for you, Galley Boy? Nah. All right, well, then it's going to be this. I'm, putting... in, I'm in found that position, dude. I'm a fucking legionnaire and shit. You're a legionnaire? Yeah, pop out of stealth, dude. I'm full on night, boy. Well, if you want to be a legionnaire, there's a whole legion of actually numerous legions of sun elves invading the continent as you speak. So I can join them anytime I want. You pretty much. All right, the guy here right beside you, Gallandan, is going to attack, pseudopod attack. Ooh, 24. Oh, 24. Oh, that, that does get through my shield. That hits. All right, well, he's going to hit you for D6 plus 3 plus an additional 4D8 acid damage. Oh, so 7 damage and the next one. Seven and twenty. Twenty-seven and damage. Twenty. That's twenty wow. after the most damage I ever took playing this game. Now nah, you got downed in the mournhold because you failed jump. You failed to jump over the wall of fire. 
I thought I could do it. I, listen, I thought I could do If I could do it with a fat dwarf, I thought I could do it with <laughs> fucking nimble elves. <laughs> uh, okay, are you wearing non-magical armor? Uh, I got studded leather. Okay, your studded leather takes a permanent and cumulative negative one penalty to the AC it offers. If the armor penalty is reduced to 10, it's destroyed. Okay, that's cool, but I can't find my Apple Pencil, so I can't write that down. Oh, don't worry. I'll remind you. So I will put my uh, armor class at 15 when, I, when I'm not using shield. Okay. These guys hit pretty hard. You don't want to get hit by them. Look, I even put all the details up there, so we know. Oh, God. Oh, all right. For, um, okay. All right, so here we go. Now, um, down on the other end of the hallway, Savik, the black ooze next to you, is going to attack. 18. That's a miss, isn't it? Yes, that is a miss. All right, he whiffs. Uh, and so you see this black pudding kind of lurch. Its whole form kind of extends as it swipes at you, and you nimbly step out of the way and dodge, and it's your turn, Savik. Okay, uh, I'm going to have my familiar take the help action and fly over the uh, little part of the black ooze there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, do the uh, booming blade spirit shroud combo for the for the win. Uh, starting this off with the booming blade attack. Uh, I'm just gonna go nice. ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and roll the second attack then. Sure, sure. Uh, twenty. Okay. Yeah, all hits. Their all AC right. is like their AC is ridiculous. It's like seven. So. I'm just going to roll two of these for both attacks and then follow it up okay. with 3d8. Damn, 41? Yep. All right, he dissipates with the last hit into a uh, sort of a puddle of black goo onto the floor. Dude, a puddle of mud. Yeah, a puddle of mud. I can't think of any of their songs right now. So, I mean, you're going to have to inject some mud vein in order to know that. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. All right, anything else, Savik? Um, that's going to... That's going to end my turn. All right, uh, that's a round down then, and gallon down. We're back up at the top. I have something for you. Uh, why is it a thing? And then yeah, I like it a bit. Uh, 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 uh. Do, 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 I want to disengage. Spread all the way in the back. That eats up my bonus action, and all I can do is attack. All I can do is attack. Power attack, buddy, here we go. Get ready for the fireworks show. Teenage. I don't have a mark, and I don't have um, sneak back on him. Either. Yeah, that's that's thirty seven points of damage total. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Okay, well, thirty seven points of damage will put him down as well, and his form dissipates into a black goo upon the floor. I'm telling you, man, most expensive soil test 
contamination, I can order. I'm going to build these guys. You know, you know what that means. You know what the the presence of a black pudding would indicate. Mold. Well, I, that's not what I was going to say, but all right. It would be like meta knowledge. Hey, fellas, it's going to be 500 experience for the, the black puddings. Poor sneaky on you there. For me? Everybody. I, thought you, I was like, oh, man, I bet I know why you put these guys in here because they have blind sense. Yeah. Somebody's been looking at that stat block. Are you kidding me? I'm always like, well, do I want to throw this mob at them? Well, is it going to be able to check this sneaky fucker or not? Like, <laughs> Well, now you know how I fight when I get attacked by fucking blind sight. Yeah. At least I got disengaged and, like, cutting action coming in there. Yeah, that was good. Man, you took a, you took some serious hits. It's okay. I'm, I'm planning on not taking any more damage for a while, and then I'll be, I should be good. As long as I stick to that, I should be good. All right, well, I hate to do it, but are you guys cool if we call it right here since it's already quarter after 10? That's fine. Got a little bit of D&D in, you know? Oh, good. Got to see Gallandian take some some DPS. <laughs> you pretty rare thing. Yeah, it was. And I don't um, know. The real champion of that's Darren. Yeah. <laughs> Can't take damage if you don't show up. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I think I think next uh next week we should be able to finish the rest of this wing, no problem. Cool. So well, I hope it was fun. I know it was a short one. No, would... but... hey, hey, watch this video. I think I didn't listen to it, the audio, but I think it's the one I was looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Watch this video. Okay. <laughs> you know what i i still have been li listening to that dwarf metal a lot oh yeah I was playing some dwarf metal. That's why I was coming up with like a song, and it was like this fucking sea, the dungeon would be like this sea crypt, and there was the dwarf Viking, and he never made it home. And then he wakes you, the adventurers go in the sea crypt and end up waking him up. And then his fault in his head, you know, he's this undead dwarf now, and now he wants to go back to the shore. He's just going back home. And so when he's fighting you, he just, he, you know, they're indistinguishable from whoever he was trying to plunder or fight or whatever. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I have, I think that the concept of dwarf Vikings is very enticing. Like, they still, like, the way I conceptualize it is, like, they still have, like, a mountain fortress, but it has an outlet to the sea, and they send raiders out to bring wealth back, you know? So they're still doing like that, looting and raiding and stuff, but they still also live in a, a fortified mountain hall. But, you know, they, they took to the seafaring life for some reason. Well, hey, we were puffing pretty hard off that uh, um, Dwarf Samurai thing for a while, and then we just got a point. 
Darren's bonfire party. Not Darren's bachelor party. That was Darren's bachelor, bachelor party. party. Yeah, because they all Darren's went out on the lake party. and it was like a hundred. It was like a hundred degrees, and we just sat around drinking sodas. <laughs> Talk about boys. Yeah, I'm going out there. Dude, everybody who was stupid, like who went out there, they come back fucking burnt. Yeah, that's exactly why I didn't want to like, go. Like, no. you know, it's hard, dude. Yeah. It was so miserable. You know where it wasn't Where's miserable? Sit in the shade. Sit in the shade was fine. That was a good yeah. time. Yeah. That's where we got um we came up with the lure of what is it? Uh money laund uh Sleepy Bear's uncle, the money launderer or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was his name? Uh I don't I don't I can't remember. <laughs> I can't either. That's bad. It's probably that's probably because we went on to win the beer pong championship that night and then defended the title. Oh, and, get the fuck out and, then, <laughs> and then and then went on to the the winner's circle too hardcore. Let's Dave, just say there was a lot of drinking that night. Dude, do you think a that you and his drinking. name was like do Bear you, Money Collector or something like that? Yeah. Do you think that you and Arna could come to join us at the Ren Fair the weekend that we're going just a day? Uh, yeah, we should be able to do that. I would love, what day are you going now? Mm-hmm. We're driving down the 29th as soon as Kyle, Kyle and Hannah will get to ship around 5. So I'm thinking we should, what? September? September? Yeah. So I'm thinking yeah, we'll as long leave. As I can do like two weeks in advance, I think I can get. Get that. Yeah, so I would say Saturday is probably the day to go because then you can drink and have fun. And but we're gonna drive down. I'm saying we're probably gonna. I I'd like us to leave by six to get down there and check in, and then we'll party a little bit down there. Like we rented a house, and then we're gonna go Saturday the thirtieth, the thirtieth, and Sunday the first. So, yeah, you guys should come. It's going to be a great time. Like, come Saturday or Sunday? Um, well, if you if you decide to come Saturday, we got a place you can stay. Yeah, but we have, we have work on Saturday, it's, Sunday, and Friday. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, I would say come Saturday. What, um, will, what time does Kyle have to be back for his flight? Uh, I don't think they fly out until Monday. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. So I don't think there's any rush to leave or get back. And I am going to use my um, Labor Day holiday. Like at my work, I get to bank holidays if I work. So I'm going to work on Labor Day and my office will close probably at noon or one. But I get paid for the whole day and then I get to bank that day of PTO and I'm going to put in for that Monday off. So I have like a day just to chill, you know. So I can also have a good time on. Sunday and not have that looming feeling of like, ah, fuck, I have to work tomorrow, you know? But yeah, you guys yeah, should come, I, I, you guys should come if you can. Holiday stuff. Yeah. yeah, September 30th if you can. So it should be a great time. Uh, I already told Kyle that we're going to have a rematch of our duel. <laughs> Try not to get too drunk. How much do you... No, I think being drunk is the key. How much oh, do you... Oh, okay. How much do you think I could pay the guy to let us fight with both hands or with, like, the blunted swords? Bribing guards, I see. I mean... What do you care, Witcher? <laughs> I don't. I'm, intim- I'm impersonating a town guard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're going. You should come. It's going to be a great time. If you guys need costume stuff, I got a shitload of Ren Fair garb for free. I got 11 pieces oh, of clothing. I got, oh, I got a lot of shirts. I like, got I'm just gonna... pants, a hat, baggy shirts. I got Jinko jeans. Well, if you need a cloak or anything, let me know, because I got, like, six of them now. Lady was just going to donate them, 
And she got in touch with Frank Kressler because he does like, he collects donations for companies or something. And Frank messaged me on Facebook and he was like, hey, you go to the rent fair, right? And I said, yeah. And he said, this lady I know is giving away all this shit. And if you want it, it's yours. And I was like, you have any pictures? And so he sent pictures and I was like, yeah, I'll take that. Because even if there's only a handful of things that like our group of friends can use out of it, I can sell the rest of it. So, well, yeah, about that there. I thought it might have cost him less. Uh, but I think the last years of working. We had a pretty good time last year. So, yeah, I hope you guys can make well, it. We'll we'll try. Yeah, fun. we're going to yeah. try. Let's try to do that. That'll be cool. Yeah, man. That will be fun. We had a good time last time. Too. Yeah, it was great. I would have been just as happy to sit there and listen to the musicians all day and drink beer. Yeah. Smoke fig. Yeah. I'm getting a church warden pipe. I'm going to hit up the tobacco vendor. Yeah, they look pretty good. Did you you smoke that cigar I got you yet? Me? Yeah, you. It's been yeah, it's been gone for months now. Okay. I would just take a little. Uh, I'd, t- I'd take a couple puffs off of it, and then I would put it down. I probably had to do three or four sessions with it, and then, and then, um, yeah, and then I was good. So I yeah, I, I smoked it in shifts. Nice. Yeah, that's how I did that. Little, little puffy puffs on the back porch. That's what I would do. Hey guys, did um, you guys had a good time at the session? Yeah. Awesome. I know Both it was a short one. Yeah, for real. Like, yeah, it's a pretty good night in general for D and D. Yeah. So, all what? right. Well, uh, I'm gonna get going here. I gotta go walk my puppy. And uh, thanks for coming tonight, boys. And no, thanks uh, for West. DMing. Yeah, man. Yeah. Anytime. Thanks for. Uh, oh, um. Thanks for playing some Blutter's Gate. Man, I would love to play Blutter's Gate Blutter. every day. Blutter's Gate. Hey, uh. I told Dave you I'll got let, some news. I'll let you guys news. know. Yeah, please do. I told Dave you got some news from the Archmage. I wasn't sure if you wanted to tell him about that. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I forgot about that. I was just going to say, before we, before we go, I'll let you guys know if I can do a game Sunday night. I'll oh, see yeah. If I can get anything done. Yeah, I'm down. I'll see if that. I can do something, and then I'll let you know if it's if we're good or not. What news did you get from the Archmage? So the Archmage was pretty much uh, via Sending Stone. Uh, he, uh, let's see here. So what's happening is, um, so what's happening is the Archmage is building a basically a magic uh, artifact or item consuming device that erects a barrier a magical barrier around King's Garden and depending on how much we feed it you know that's how large the barrier is oh uh, okay so this is basically just to fortify the defenses of King's Garden and in in any ap- impending attack like scrying and shit or what have you. Do you know well, about you would the, need detection for that. Do you know about the Netherese Mythols? That sounds like a dangerous brand of cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> uh well they're they're pretty much like these artifacts of great and terrible power that can be infused with magical artifacts or spell slots and be used to they can do certain things but in this case they want to use one 
to create this barrier to help shore up the defenses of the city if war comes to the city. So no, you mean think garden people want to use space to do that? Yeah, so basically the, okay. uh, the Arcane University, the professors of the Arcane University minus Savik, who's out doing the king's duty, uh, or duty for the king, I should say, sat down and had a meeting and were trying to do their part to figure out how they could protect the city. And that's what they came up with. The Archmage come up with this plan? Yeah, well, it's like the Archmage sat down with all the other professors at the Arcane University and they, they discussed it as a group. You know, they had like a scholarly review. So this is the best they come up with, huh? They didn't ask Gallon Dan what he thought. Well, how can they? He's out in the wilderness. Well, I tell you what, Savit got invited to a meeting in the Citadel with all the all the professors from the Arcane University and maybe, oh, with all the smart people. Maybe you can tag along. I don't know. <laughs> all the smart people had to get together and pretend they had used their big words and stuff. Well, well I mean, interesting. Got to use that education somehow. Well, they got to, okay, so they got to find these little thingies and then shore up the defenses. Is that what the plan is? Sorry, what was the first part of that? Well, oh, well so they got to get these, like, uh, artifact weapon things that sound like really fucked up menthol cigarettes and shore up the defenses at King's Garden? Yeah, so they have one in the basement of the Citadel. And the basement of the Citadel. It was, and do they need more? Mm, they need magical items and or spell slots to be donated to increase the radius. Every 10 items or spell slots increase the radius of the Mythalar barrier. And do they expect us to help with that while they sit around and eat peanut butter and pepperoni sandwiches? Yes. <laughs> yes, they do. So basically, uh, magic. Basically magic. Basically magic. No, uh, the Archmage told Savik that it was... Uh, the Dragon King Ornax gifted this Mythal to the Aurelian King a century ago and promised him that it would one day be useful to him. And here it is a hundred years later and, you know. I gotcha. You know, because gold dragons can do that shit where they can kind of glimpse ahead a little bit. Oh, yeah, I know. Because, you know, gold dragons are the best dragons, and I'll accept no argument on this. <laughs> what do you think would happen if Ornax and Garrix fought? I'm sorry, Gary X. Gary X? Uh, that would be... Prob that would probably be... Um... I would probably be a tough fight. I know red dragons hate silver dragons, I think, because they're the ones that can actually eat them. But I think gold and red, I think, are a bit more evenly matched up. That'd be like a clash of the titans. Yeah, I don't know where I'm getting this information from, but I think like, you're right. It could be wrong, though. But... I think out of I think the gold ones aren't as bad as the silver ones for red. Kind of like Pokemon here, you get the colors. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. All right, boys, I'm gonna get going. I gotta walk my dog, and she's a little stubborn puppy. All right, man.
All right, dudes. Thanks for coming. It was a yep. great session. I, I hope for DMing. you guys had fun. Absolutely. I'll be happy to do it again next week. Cool. So, and I'll All see right. you on Friday. All right. I'll see you guys. All right, Petey's. Later, guys. Yeah.